Yeah, yeah, we we want to wait. Okay. Fifteen minutes. Maybe ten, because really ten people people come late from okay, coffee okay. and so on. So okay, okay let's. Uh, uh, so the break will be from uh, fifteen thirty, half past three to twenty minutes to four. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want questions after your talk or during your talk? I think well, we don't have a talk. We are so mostly the people are working, so okay. we can we can do it really interactively. Okay, mm. so I will show you. I have. So before before the break, I will show you. Ten and five minutes left. Yeah. Okay, like this. It's before the break. Yeah. And uh, in the end, also I will show you, but a bit sooner. I will leave like maybe five minutes for questions because people really do have questions. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But unfortunately. Uh, ah. Yeah, yeah, it's not working.
my name is Irina, session chair in this room. If you have any organization questions, you can address them to me, okay? I ask you, please don't leave the door because it's quite noisy and disturb all, all the audience and the speakers. Uh, I will uh, ask you to be quiet during the presentation because we don't have uh, microphones. Okay, and also, uh, we will distribute USB sticks. There will be a huge file, like 500 megabytes, right? You need to copy this file on your machine and pass it to the next. Okay, thank you. Just my <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, megabytes. <laughs> It's in the workshop folder and the free IPA. Yeah, we, we, we don't need them right now, but, but later on we definitely need them. So it's, it's okay if you disagree with them. Okay, cool. So then uh, I would say, uh, let's start, right? So welcome everybody, uh, pleasure for me to be here and uh, presenting about uh, free IPA. Um, my name is Thorsten Scher. Um, I work for, for Red Hat as a software uh, maintenance engineer in the global uh, identity management team. So I'm, I'm uh, mostly touching things like uh, LDAP, uh, everything that related to Care Wars, X509 and, and such interesting things. And, um, yeah, I'm uh, located in Germany, and um, for me, I, uh, actually, it's the second time that I'm here in, in, in Bruno. And I really like to thank you and to thank also the city of Bruno and uh, whoever went to the airport of Bruno, because this time it was really easy to get here. So since we now have this direct flight from Germany to, to Bruno, it just uh, uh, took me like 20, uh, sorry, 90 minutes or so to, 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 to get here. Last year it was much, much more difficult. No? So it took me like one and a half days to get here because I, have, I, mean, I think I wrote it over to Bratislava and then we had to spend the night in Bratislava and took the train to get back to Bruno. So really thank you that we have this direct flight connection. Um, okay, so um, I'm not alone. I have to leave this mm -hmm. um, My name is uh, Herman Parente. I'm working also in Torsten team as support engineer. In, uh, in identity management uh, uh, aspects. Uh, I'm more a specialist in, in the back end that we will see uh, that is using free IPA, that is uh, Red Hat Directory Server, the LDAP server of uh, Red Hat. Um, and I will be here assisting you in the different exercise that we are going to propose to, for you to discover this uh, technology free, free IPA. So, before we start with the actual workshop, a uh, uh, little overview about the agenda. So we have actually two parts. So obviously this is the first part today, uh, where we do a little introduction about free IPA. Actually, uh, who has already some, uh, so which of you has already some experience about free, or with free IPA? Okay, so which of you has hands-on experience with uh, free IPA? Okay, so um, you will get some hands on experience during this workshop. I, mean, I will promise you know, we have a lot of exercises that uh, you can go through, and uh, you will hopefully get your hands dirty with the uh, with the later on. Um, so, as, as, I, oops, as I said, we will start with the introduction uh, in free IPA. So, um, what it is, why is this best thing since sliced bread, why you want to use it, why it's so much better than other products in that area. Um, what you can do with it, some, some overviews about the features and so on and so forth. And um, so then it's really up to you. So as I said, uh, this workshop, it's, a, it's really a workshop. No? It's not a presentation. Presentation is done in the introduction of part. But then it's up to you uh, to work with the product. So we have, a, um, we have an environment repair, which is based on, 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 on vacant. I will talk a little bit about the environment later on. And um, so you're supposed to set up a vacant environment on your boxes. We have some, some uh, modules uh, prepared. And you're supposed to go through all of those modules. So and the idea is uh, to finish the main server installation and client installation today. 
Yeah? And we also have an, uh, another module which we'd like to go through today, which is about uh, user and end group member management. Um, it might take some time to set up everything properly, but I'd really like to ask you to take the time and to set up a proper environment on your machine, because the whole workshop really relies on a properly working environment. Yeah? So if, if something is not working properly on your box, please let us know. We really should take the time to fix problems today so that we can go through the rest of the workshop and through the remaining modules um, uh, tomorrow. Um, so and as you can see tomorrow, the second part, it, it starts at 10, 1040, and it also is, uh, so it also lasts for, for one and a half hour, just like the one today. And um, we will cover topics like host based access control, um, um, web service configuration and um, the enrollment of the, of the web service into the free IPA domain. We will uh, cover um, briefly certificate management. Um, we will show you <coughs> how you can install a replica so that you don't have to rely on, the, on a single server. And um, yeah, then uh, at the end we talk a little bit about uh, SSH public key management for uh, users and their hosts. And as I said, we will briefly cover all of the topics, so we will give you a little introduction about the topics, but then it's up to you uh, to set it up on your, on your own box. And that's why it's really so important to have a properly working environment. Um, any, any questions regarding the agenda please, so far? Okay. Um, so let's let's start with the with the introduction part, no? and then we can talk later on about the setup, uh, what you are supposed to do on your on your own boxes. Um, so what is free IPA? Uh, free IPA uh, it's uh, it's short for for identity policy and and, and uh, audit. So it's a framework that provides identity information, uh, policy information, and. Um, Yes, I agree. The focus so far definitely has been on the identity and on the on the policy uh, uh, part. But uh, I can tell you, uh, the <coughs> part it, it, it's in the works, and uh, you can expect to see something uh, regarding this component uh, in the near future as well, hopefully. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, free IPA, It's an open source project that has been started already a couple of years ago. Uh, the last release. Uh, uh, was uh, in, in December, it was uh, version 4.3. Um, it's, it's, it's all based on, on well-known uh, open source uh, uh, tools and uh, open source projects, so we are not reinventing the wheel, uh, but what we are doing with free IPA is to, to provide, so to say, the glue between the different components. Uh, so for example, we have an, an LDAP server, which acts uh, uh, as kind of a, a back-end for all the information uh, which are stored here in the framework and instead of coming up with a new solution we use a well-known uh, um, uh, LDAP server which is actually a 389 um, um, directory server and the same is true for the other components as, as well. You will see that on one of the next slides. Um, so and uh, yeah, Free APA it's uh, actually the FSIM uh, project for for Red Hat's uh, identity management solution, which is part of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So it, it comes for, for for free, so people don't need an extra subscription to, to, to get access to the bits. It's, it's part of it's part of the of the actual operating system. Okay, so here's a little little architecture overview uh, and which components are involved. As I said, we have a directory server. Um, the, uh, the component which is used here was, uh, as I just said, the 389 uh, DS. Um, we have um, a Kerberos server. Um, this is the uh, MIT Kerberos uh, software which is used here. We have a DNS, a bind DNS. NTP is also used to have synchronized time between all the, between all the different machines. And also a certificate system. Um, to uh, manage uh, certificates. And this one is actually also based on, 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 on DocTech. So that's uh, the architecture. So we have a web user interface, no, which can be used to actually manage the whole environment, and which can also be used as kind of a self-service portal for, for users to, 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 to edit their own, uh, their own data. 
Uh, of course, this is limited to, to certain attributes. Um, no? Cannot change the manager if you would like to do that, but uh, that's not possible, of course. But for example, you could change uh, your office number or office address or whatever. What, what and there is also a command line tool which can also be used to, uh, to manage the whole, the whole thing, the whole framework. And as always, <coughs> most of the time it's, it's more convenient to uh, just use a command line tool to add something uh, quickly instead of using the web UI, but of course that's completely up to you. Uh, if you're a GUI fan, then use the GUI. If you like the command line, then just use the command line tool. Um, So, <clears throat> some of the features. So, well, IPA provides centralized authentication via Kerberos, uh, and, 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 and uh, that, that's what I, what I already mentioned. Uh, so, you can store user information, you can store group information, you can store host, host groups, you can store services and, and, and net groups. That's all part of the IPA framework, and IPA can handle all of those, those identity informations. Um, it's really, really easy to set up the whole thing. So, <clears throat> if you know how difficult it, it can be to already set up a single, let's say, Kerberos environment, you know, it, it's really different now with, with free IPA, you know, because you just have a single tool to set up the server, and this single tool creates and, and <coughs> configures uh, all the different components for you. Well, actually, it configures the components, doesn't create them, but it configures them. And um, after a while, it's all, it's all done. Right? It, it, it's finished. So it takes a while. It depends on which components you, you want to use and which um, which might be optional in your environment. But in average, it takes not more than than ten minutes to complete an, an whole installation. And the same is actually true for the, for the client as, as as well. In order to enroll a client into a free uh, into a free IP domain, it's just one tool that can be executed and. Um, um, ideally, it finds all the necessary information to which server it has to talk to and uh, which wheel it should be used uh, uh, in, in, in DNS. Um, so it does a DNS auto-discovery um, so that you really just have to, to enter the, the tool name, push enter button, and then it's, it's, it's all done. So it's really, really easy. Um, with pluggable and extendable framework for the uh, user interface, and the same is also true for the for the command line. So basically, when you use the, the, the command line, it, it's all it's all based on on, on modules. Right? So you just have one tool, one little IPA tool, and then it depends on which module you you pass as an argument to the tool, uh, what kind of information you wanna wanna manage in the free IPA environment. Right? So for example, if you wanna want to do something related to users, uh, you call the user module. If you want to do something which is related to, to hosts, you call them the host module, and so on and so on. Yeah, self-service portal, that's what I, what I already mentioned. Uh, so, some more features. So, you can, um, uh, you can um, Create and, and manage X509 certificates. So in the past, it was limited to um, to hosts and, and services. But with uh, with the latest releases, uh, you can also request uh, user certificates. Uh, for example, now if you want to do uh, SMIME uh, and you have the need to to release uh, user certificates for your for your user, that's now possible with with, with IPA. Yeah? So it's not just limited to to user <coughs> to host and to to service uh, certificates. Um, you can configure a uh, host-based access control. No? So, uh, for instance, you can define user A is allowed to log in to uh, host uh, B, but user A is only allowed to use the SSH servers on, on host B, but, but no other servers no? and such things. No? That's possible. <coughs> Centralized managed sudo. When I so be, before I. Moved into the current department, I was working as a, as a consultant for, for Red Hat, and I had to do with a lot of different customers, and so um, I did a, a lot of installations at customer sites, and customers really told me the centralized tool thing, that's really one of the killer features of the whole environment. That's what, what, what customers really <coughs> like the, the, the most. Well, it's not limited to this, to this feature, but, but this is one of them. I think it's really a cool thing that you can uh, store uh, sudo rules 
as part of the IPA framework and that there is no need anymore to store them locally on the, on the different systems. Yeah, I agree that's also possible with the, with the regular LDAP server, but with free IPA it's, it's much, much easier to, to do it and to, to set it up. Um, SD Linux policy management, who is, so which of you is actually using SD Linux uh, in enforcing mode? Uh, okay, so just type enforcement or do you also care about volume-based access control and such things? No? Okay. No, you should think about it again because with IPA it's really easy to implement this as well. So uh, if you want to create a mapping between a, a system user, so a user who logs into a system, and um, as the Linux user identity, instead, uh, in, instead of, of doing this mapping locally on the, on, the, on the client system, you can do that on IPA. No? So you just define the mapping on the IPA framework, and as soon as the user logs in, the mapping is, uh, is, is done. So there's no need to, to do that locally on the system. <coughs> so, oops, sorry. So you have uh, group-based password policies. Um, you can uh, so you can configure the whole uh, the whole server as a NIST server if there is still the need for it. So if there are still people out there using using uh, NIST. Uh, if you if you want to migrate slowly from this uh, legacy to solution to a more modern solution, uh, then you can configure the IPA system as a, as a NIST server. So you can import your your, your NIST maps. The clients are still able to talk NIST to the server, and then you can start slowly to migrate over from NIST to, to IPA, and so that in the end, um, clients are not talking NIST anymore, but more modern protocols like LDAP or, or Kerbals. Uh, painless password migration, that's also a quite interesting thing. If you want to migrate to IPA from a, from a, from a other solution, like another LDAP server, for example, or also NIST, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to migrate the password. The problem here is that <coughs> when you want to use CareWars, you have to have, a, 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 you have, to have um, a principle with a password assigned to it. So and, uh, if you, um, if you um, use this uh, password mi migration thing, uh, it's really easy um, to let IPA create the CareWars principle for the users you are migrating over to the, to the IPA environment automatically, you know, without a lot of manual inter uh, uh, interventions. Uh, so DNS, um, as I um, have shown in the, in the architecture picture, um, IPA is also able to, um, to handle DNS. No? That's part of the uh, bind service. Uh, it's, it's optional, so you don't have to use it, but it's really convenient if, if you use it. Because if, if you don't use it, then uh, it's really up to you to, to manually add the required DNS record to the already existing DNS server. Uh, so if, for example, if you have to deal with, with service records, for example, or with regular A or, or PTR records, you have to add them to the, to the existing server, uh, mostly manually. I mean, there, was, there, was, there were other ways to do it, but customers I have seen, when they don't use the integrated server, they mostly do it, uh, do it, do it manually. So, replication. Uh, I already said that uh, you can set up more than just one server. So you can set up replicas. Um, as I think, uh, and... Uh, Please correct me if I'm wrong. There is no technical limitation in the number of replicas that, that can be set up. But uh, what we test in house is a setup of up to 20 replicas. Right? Um, that's that's what we what we test uh, in house. No? So if there was a need to have more than that 20 replicas, uh, technically it's definitely possible. But from a performance point of view. Uh, it might be something that uh, is not 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 I, 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 you know, because the more replicas you you have, um, the more replica traffic happens, and um, the, there might be some 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 issues with the, with the, with the number of, of replicas you add to your environment. Um, so you can also replicate um, data from an existing Active Directory. Uh, 
So uh, domain, so you can, so FreeRPA is able to talk to domain controller, which is part of an, uh, of an Active Directory domain, even though we call this kind of web application legacy because there are more modern methods available the, these days. But um, if there is a need for it, it's, it's still possible that you replicate existing user entries from an Active Directory domain over to the free IPA domain. You know? And then um, those Windows users can also access resources in the IPA domain. Um, the, the problem here, and that's what I've seen in the field as well, is uh, just replicating user entries, of course, is, is, is not enough. So that AD accounts can log in uh, and access IPA resources. What is, of course, also re required is the password. Sure. So you also have to replicate the user password from the AD side uh, to the IPA side. And the way how we do it is, we have a little utility called Passsim. It's a package uh, which can be uh, which can be installed on the on the domain controllers, and it captures the password from the users um, and send it over uh, send it over to the to the IPA server, and then it's it's stored on the on the, on the IPA side. Huh? So you have to come up with some some mechanism that that, that people are somehow forced to. To, to uh, change their password, for example, in order to, to capture it, you know, this is utility, um, and then send it over to the, to the IPA side. Um, but that, that's how, how it works. And, and that's actually also the, the problem. Huh? So if, if you go to a customer and you set up the whole thing, usually in large enterprises, there are different departments who take care of about the, the Linux side and you know, the Windows side. Huh? And when you, as a Linux guy, go to the Windows team and tell them that they have to install a little shiny utility you know, which is capturing the user password, you know, password so, which are then sent over to the, to the Linux IBM system. Uh, that, that's crazy. Yeah? People usually don't, don't like that. You know? um, but you, you have to do it no, in order to, to get the passwords. So another method uh, to, to to integrate IPA systems uh, into an existing uh, AD domain is uh, a Kerberos VM trust. Huh? So <clears throat> what you can do on the, on the IDM side is uh, to set up Zamba. Zamba provides some, some, some required services um, to, um, uh, to, 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 to have the, the necessary fun functionality available. And if those services are available, the IDM system more or less looks like a domain, uh, so to the IDM domain controllers, the IDM service looks like a regular DC, uh, just like another domain con con controller. And um, of course, then you can set up a trust between those, between, between those two systems. And then um, there is no need to, to replicate information from the AD side to the IDM side, so all the accounts uh, can, uh, can still be stored on the, on the AD domain controller. There's no need to copy them over or replicate them over. Uh, but um, because of the trust, um, users from the AD side are able to access resources on the, on the IDM side. You know? um, so, and that's even true not just to the domain controller, which is responsible for, 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 the, for the actual domain where the domain controller belongs to, but for all the, the domains um, that belong to the same uh, uh, AD calls. Of course, you can blacklist certain domains you know, if you want to uh, keep certain users out from, a, from specific domains. You, know, you can blacklist those domains. Um, yeah. So that's the cross chaos we and trust settings. Huh? And that's, that's the thing that we really like to encourage you to use when you want to integrate uh, IDM into existing a AD domains. It's so much. It's so much easier to do compared to, to the replication thing. It also has some requirements, and we will talk about them later on as well. But uh, in, in general, it's, it's definitely easier to get it up and, and, and run. Um, yeah, and then you also have uh, various <coughs> clients you can use <coughs> as uh, yes, IPA client systems. Uh, in, um, and um, we have one, one native client application we will talk about uh, in, uh, in the next slide. 
but uh, you can also uh, make use out of your regular PAM and uh, NSS stack in order to talk uh, to, to, to IPA. So every system which, which comes with the NSS and PAM stack uh, should be able to, to talk to the framework and um, um, authenticate system uh, users against the framework. Okay, so that's the native client I, I just mentioned, SSSD, it's a system security services daemon. And um, yeah, it's, it's part of, of, uh, of um, uh, Fedora and, 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 and RHEL, and um, it's easy to set up. And um, yeah, the, the native backend for, for SSSD, as I just said, is a free IPA, but you can also use it to, to, <coughs> um, um, to point your client system to other backend systems. Huh? So for example, if you want to want to integrate a client directly into an ID domain uh, without IDM in between, that's, that's of course also possible. <coughs> There's advantages and disadvantages, but that, that's also possible with service SSSD. Huh? So you can have various backends, and free IPA is uh, of course the, the, the native backend for this client application, but it can also be used with other backends. And if you want to make use of, uh, make use out of the all of the features uh, which are provided by, by, by IPA, then actually you also have to use this, this client application. Uh, so for example, for the <coughs> Linux user mapping or for, for uh, centralized uh, sudo and uh, SSH access, we really recommend uh, to, uh, to use this, this client application. So here's a little, little architecture picture. So this is a, this is a client, uh, sorry, this is an actual um, SSSD client. Um, um, so here you have uh, uh, um, other systems, and here uh, you have uh, the backend systems. And as you can see, you have an NSS responder here in, in front of the cl uh, uh, clients talking to the system. You have a PAM responder. So that's why I said every system which has uh, NSS stack and the PAM stack um, should be able to, uh, to talk to the framework. And then you have different providers at the backend which are then talked to the, to the actual backend system. So there was one provider <coughs> for IPA, of course, there was a provider for AD, for, for an LDAP server, and so on and so forth. And as you can see, we also have a cache uh, available here, so that uh, there was no need to, to, uh, to open new connections for every new incoming re 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 request, as long as the information is uh, cached already here uh, on, the, on the client machine. And um, yeah, that's that's the SSSD architecture. So <laughs> that's actually it for the for the overview. Um, some some resources are mentioned here um, for reference. So you have the the slide deck available as part of the of the workshop folder, which is on on the USB sticks. Uh, yeah, that's it. So um, any questions regarding what we just talked about? If not, so if not, I'd like to move over. Uh, what? So we have the break in ten minutes. Okay, yeah, that that's perfect because then we can talk a little bit about uh, the setup. Okay, so can you read that? So in the free IPA project, there was a, a nice workshop available, which I customized, or which we actually customized a little bit um, uh, for, the, for the conference here. Um, okay, it starts here. Um, so, as you can see, we have, we have various modules available here. As I said earlier, the first module is about installing the free IPA server. 
and then it, it continues. No? Then you're supposed to enroll a client into the IPA domain, do host-based access control, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, this all will only work if you carefully follow all the instructions mentioned here in the preparation section. So, as, as I said, the whole, the whole workshop is, is based on, on Vagrant. Anybody here who, is not, uh, who does not know what, what Vagrant is? Okay. So, uh, so we use Vagrant with a, with a, uh, with a libweird plug, plug, plugin. So that means uh, what you have to do later on, after, well, probably after the, uh, the, the, the break, is to install Vagrant on your box when it's not already there, together with the with Libweird plugin. What you have on your, uh, on your, on your USB sticks is a Vagrant, um, it's a Vagrant, a Vagrant uh, uh, image file, which can be imported. And um, then uh, what you will also find on your USB stick is a Vagrant file. <coughs> and if you fire up the whole environment, you will find, uh, you will find three different systems on your box. So you will find a server machine, you will find a replica machine, and you will find a, 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 a client machine. Uh, all of those three boxes are based on the image uh, which you have to import into your, into your very own machine. But it's all described in very great detail here uh, in, in, in the document. So the document itself actually is also part of, uh, of, of the USB stick. Um, so the original idea was to fetch the Vagrant box from my machine here, but um, apparently that's not possible. No? So you cannot uh, connect from your box to my box. So that, 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 that's blocked on a, on a network layer. That's why the image is part of the USB stick. It, so the original idea was also to, to clone my Git repository to your local machine, but that's not necessary anymore because all the data is now also uh, on, the, on the USB stick. Um, yeah, then you have to create entries for the virtual machines on your, on, your own, on your own box so that you can later on easily SSH into those machines, even though it's not really possible. Uh, if you're familiar with, with, with Wagwan, you can also use Wagwan SSH. Uh, machine name to SSH into the box, but uh, for example, if you want to use the web interface in order to talk to the free IPA, um, then of course you have to you have to have the proper DNS names available on your on your local box. Uh, so our proposal, I would say, is that after the after the break. Um, you fire up the document on your on your box. Go to the insta uh, go to the preparation section. Execute the commands outlined here to install Vagrant and the plugin and Bash completion and so on and so forth. That's convenient if you have Bash completion available because there's also a Bash completion file available for for IPA so that you don't have to remember all the commands. You can just use tap tap and you're fine. Uh, you're done. Um, so I, I assume, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I assume that most of you guys have a Fedora system available <laughs> on your boxes. <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong. If not, we have set up instructions for other legacy operating systems available <laughs> here as well. <laughs> but it's, it's all tested on Fedora. No, so I really like to encourage you to use Fedora. Do we have USB sticks uh, with a pre-installed Fedora that can be used? Uh, okay. So if you, okay. So which of you don't have Fedora on the on the notebook machine? Okay. So what what, what operating systems do you guys have? Ubuntu. Okay. What else? Again. Debian, okay, okay. So give it a try. Let us know if it works. If not, uh, we uh, will find a way to, 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 to make it work. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so j just to, to give you an idea, uh, as, as I said, so please, please install the necessary packages. It's outlined here. Um, 
hold on for a second. Uh, so then, as I said, the idea was to clone my, my Git repository. Don't do it. I mean, you can do it, but we have the same data also available on the, on the USB sticks. Um, then, in order to, um, to have your local, local user, uh, 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 so to, to, to um, have the local user to be able to manage the, the Vagrant environment, you have to put him into the Vagrant group and install some policy kit rule sets. So that's required so that you can use your regular user account to manage the whole environment. Uh, make sure you restart the services. So then the idea was to <clears throat> fetch the box from my local machine. As I just said, that does not work. Use your local, local USB stick again. You can just point Vagrant box at to your, to your file path, uh, so to the file pass, or actually use the file pass uh, and, and point the tool uh, to the box uh, which, which lives on your USB stick now. Make the uh, ETC host entries. And then hopefully uh, everything is working okay so that you are ready to start with the first module. <coughs> And as I said, we have, we have three hours in total. One and a half hour today, one and a half hour tomorrow. Please, really, make sure this is working okay. If not, again, you won't be able to go through the module because all of the modules require a properly set up and run. Okay, so and if you have questions, ask us. Uh, we are here to help you with the setup. And, um, Any, any questions before we go into the break? No. Okay. So then we continue in 10 minutes? We return back half past. Okay. In 10 minutes. So, 10 minutes, we see each other again. Please don't be late. Thank you. Okay. No, it doesn't break anything. So it doesn't break anything. Okay, you can just install it and cover it to whatever it is. Okay, uh, can you can you ask your, your, your name or someone to get a USB stick? Because I don't have any, but the other guys should have some sticks. If, if not, let, let me know. Okay. So you, 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 um, yeah, so th the file itself is also on the USB stick, so if you have a... Uh, there are many files. We are to the... It's called work, work, workshop.html. Uh, so you can just fire it up in your own browser. Yeah, this one. So there, there was a, so there's a subfolder on the USB stick called Free IPA Workshop, and there are some files inside, and workshop.html, that's, that's the file. We need the virtual machine from that disk. Yeah, you, you need the virtual machine as well. The virtual machine is something we need and we are looking for some virtual machine. Let's have a look. So we go to the USB and no instructions, what should we do? Yes. So if, so if you copy the screen, so if you go into the workshop, that's all up. See, that's all up. Copy the whole folder. Return group file. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a 
you mean the Because the, uh, those guys, they apparently have seven shoes. I wanted to talk for longer than 20 minutes. Huh?
So did you get it get it working? Yeah. Okay. Great. They are not part of the competition. Preparing another one, but yeah, so we have, like, one here. I don't need one. I have all the all the things here. Yeah, exactly. Does anybody need a, a USB stick or so? Or so?
Okay, so how, how, how's it going with the preparation? Everything working, working okay so far? Yeah. Or is somebody running into trouble? No? You don't have to. You, you don't have to download it from there because it's on your USB stick. You so okay. so you can't connect to my machine. That that's the problem. That's why we had to put everything everything on the on the USB stick. So if you want to look up the, the instructions <laughs> again, there was there was a f there was a file call, um, called um, workshop.html, which is also part uh, of the workshop folder. And you can just fire up in your local local web browser to find uh, all the instructions. Okay. So if you are done. And if you are really sure that Vagrant is uh, installed, you have the box file, or actually the image uh, called, uh, copied to your, to your machine. You have imported it into, into Vagrant, no? this Vagrant box app, just like outlined in the preparation section. Um, you have your DNS entries into ETC host. That's what I, what I already mentioned, right? Um, then you can, um, can start with the first module, right? And the first module is to install the IPA server on the server box, of course. And what you have to do is uh, you can just run Vagrant up in the folder where the Vagrant file actually exists. That's important. No? So here's the Vagrant file. If you want to take a look to the file, so this is the box name. That, that, that's also important. Huh? So if you import the box to, to, to Vagrant, make sure you use the command Vagrant box add box name key share slash free IPA workshop and then the path to the, to the place where you actually stored the box or the, 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 the image. So that's defined here. And then as you can see, we have uh, three machines defined in the Vagrant file. So that, that's the server definition here with a specific IP address. So then we have a replica box defined here with a specific IP address. And then the third machine is a client with another IP address from the same uh, network subnet. You don't have to take care about proper, uh, proper network configuration. That's all handled by, by, by Vagrant and, and the underlying libweird uh, framework. Um, so, when e so when everything has been copied over, just run Vagrant up, and then it creates three virtual machines based on the image you copied over from the USB stick. It just takes a minute or so to get everything up and running. So. It Configuration of the machines is done here. And then you're ready to go. Yeah, so if you run virtual list, for example, you see three virtual machines available on your, on your box now. Free IPA workshop server, client, and, and replica. Make sure you have the policy kit file installed onto your systems. Make sure your local user is part of the Vagrant uh, uh, group, otherwise this will not work. No? So, and then you can just run Vagrant SSH server, for example, uh, to uh, SSH into the server machine, and as you can see, that's indeed the server. It has uh, a specific IP address assigned. Um, that's the one we defined in the Vagrant file earlier here, 30, 3310. You can also connect to the replica system. 
here we have the replica available. And you can also connect to, oh, actually, I can also look it up here, the client. Here we have the client. They have network access. Uh, so you can ping the server machine from the client, and you can also ping the replica machine from the client. And the same is true for, for the other way around as well. So. Try to get this up and running. And then, as I said, you can start with the first module. Instructions are, can be found here. Basically, what you have to do in the first module is to get your server <laughs> up and running. No? So, oh, that is one, one thing I, I forgot to mention. So if you connect to the Vagrant box by running Vagrant SSH server name, uh, you are automatically connected as a Vagrant user. And this Vagrant user has, uh, um, has uh, a sudo access. Uh, so you can just run sudo IPA server install, no ho host DNS, um, MK home dear to set up the server. But again, because it's really so important, before you do that, really make sure everything is, has been configured properly. Anyone already has a server up and running who wants to get the first scarf here? Anybody? You have it up and running? Sure. Okay, cool. Here's your scarf. Is it even possible to make it up and running on OS X? Sorry? Is it even possible to make it run on uh, OS X? Yeah, yeah, there are some setup instructions for OS X as well, but. Um, I didn't test this on my on my, on on, on because, six because uh, I'm not really. I, I have VirtualBox installed, Vagrant installed, Gnome uh, repository, and uh, it uh, tells me some error about the uh, libvirt VM provider. Yeah. The, the, and the, I think there's no libvirt for OS six. That's true. That, that that is correct. So and the problem here is uh, that uh, the image uh, we are using is uh, for libvirt based environment. So you cannot use VirtualBox with this image. Yeah. So maybe you should think about booting your box from a USB stick and boot up a Fedora. Is that possible? No, can we, can, do we, so do we have um, Fedora we systems installed? So that they can boot the machine with a Fedora? So we, we, we don't have such So you can boot your, local, your, your, your box with a USB stick and then you have a Fedora up and running and then you can follow the instructions. Okay. Yeah. It does not touch your other operating system. Uh, can I uh, run it from the toolbox? No. The, 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 so you can also boot up a Fedora and then you can use Libvirt. In theory, yes, it does work, but the image we have available here is only, only for, for Libvirt based environment. Because the idea was that everybody used Libvirt and if you don't have it available on your box, you can, you can boot up a, a Fedora system from the USB stick.
So if you encounter any any problems during the setup, that are there. Are some We can. I will do it just to show them. I just wanted to mention something is that uh, if you, if after having read all the features that this product includes, uh, do you think it's not enough for you? Uh, we have a hidden in the audience the architects and program managers of uh, VIPA and uh, at server, so you can discuss with them about the roadmap. You have to find them first. Just <laughs> to say that they are here. If you have some further questions. Yeah. 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 Yeah, some of the uh, um, sticks, they were damaged, apparently. Anybody already with a working IPA server available? Okay. We have some more scarves to give away. So you get definitely one. Oops. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, who was it? Okay, third one, and then I think that's it. <laughs> who also has? Is it up and running? Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> 
So what I will, will do while you are still working on the, on the setup, I will also execute the command on my, on my server box so that you can take a look how it, how it should look like. Uh, so this is the first Vagrant machine which has been set up here. And that's the installer program. As, as I said, I don't want to do a DNS lookup for the, for the server machine name. And I do want to have... Um, uh, home directories configured on, 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 on the box when a user logs in for the first time, but, it, uh, but the user does not have a home directory available. Yeah, there are other solutions available, like an uh, auto-mounter that then can automatically mount a centralized NFS share, for example. It's also described in the, in the, in the document, but here we don't have that. I just, tell them, I just tell the installation program, please create a home directory when a user logs in and the directory is not there. Just create one for, for the user. And yeah, then you get some, some, some more information from the installer. Um, we do tell the installer to set up binds. Uh, I just uh, take the default server name, which is server IPA demo.local. I confirm the default domain name, IPA demo.local. I also confirm the uh, real name, which is equal to the DNS name in uppercase. Uh, so this is the password of the directory manager, which is actually the manager of the L